We should make a series where you guys submit all your own crappy writing and we just read it all and laugh at it together. Just a thought. What is up guys? Welcome to the third installment of Room for Improvement. I'm your host Chris and yes this is a makeup brush and not a microphone but I'm just gonna go with it. Today we are talking about having an abundance of characters. So what am I doing in this video? I'm going to be going back through my old writing and laughing my ass off at it. For real though I've picked out five of the biggest issues of my old manuscripts and I'm going to be discussing them here. I'm going to talk about what I did wrong, how I'm gonna fix it, and what I still definitely need to improve on. And if you have issues with the same thing, tell me in the comments so we can help each other out and be best friends for life, yay! If you haven't seen the first two episodes, go below, check the description, I have a link there. They're super fun, you should watch them first. We're going to be going through two different stories today. The first is a book that I wrote in ninth grade on Wattpad, and if you wanna go check that out, it's actually still up, but it's an utter garbage heap, so please don't judge me because of it. The second one I wrote junior year of high school, and it is unpublished and unfinished. I was trying to accomplish too much with too many characters, and I made a terrible outline. And I am a plotter, so I need a good outline if I'm gonna be able to write a book. Basically, I got to 100 thousand words out of 120,000, decided it wasn't worth it to finish it, and dropped it. And that's the one we're going to be looking at today. It's called Mortals, and it's set in kind of a futuristic dying world, and it's got all these cities warring against each other, and it's got these like main 12 characters who are supposed to be the saviors of this one city because, you know, we love chosen one stories, and so they're, like, going to this other city to try to destroy it, and they pick up this guy along the way, Not along the way he's at the city. You know, I don't even know. I don't know how to describe it. It was just dumb. So this is going to be a shorter video because I don't really have any passages to read to you guys. Um, there just aren't any good parts of the book that show how many characters I had. I think the only way I'll be able to show that to you guys is just by naming off as many as I could in a row. And let me remind you that I spent years since I was 13 developing these characters, so I should be able to remember their names because I, uh, I was so into this book idea. Okay, so here we go. We got Nora, Nate, Brittany, Connor, Trevor, Logan, uh, Zori, Sam, Adrian, Marianne, Evan, and Duncan, and then Navigator, Lord Fire, Commander O'Hara, um, there's gotta be some others that I'm forgetting, uh, oh, Derek, um, Lord Mason, um, Crap, I think that's as much as I can do. <laughs> the point is, way too many to fit into a short book and try to have perspectives from all of them. It was just a hot mess. And that's not even including all the other books I had planned, because I had two more in the series, and then they were going to introduce some more, like Kiara and her brother, and then we had, like, uh, Ash and this other girl who was his wife, and then they had, like, four kids. And then Marianne and, and Adrian had two other sisters for some reason, I don't really know why, and then Zora's family came into it, and her dog, she had a shit ton of dogs. Um, I need to stop ranting. <laughs> now I know that that doesn't sound like a lot of characters, because there are some authors that can definitely pull off a large cast, but imagine that none of these characters have any defining personality traits, and that they're all just bland, have no distinctive qualities, boring as hell. Okay, now you're starting to get it, why this was such a train wreck. I remember in the first draft, and I did write multiple drafts of this book, I wrote many beginnings, I never ended it, that I introduced all 12 characters at the same time. All the 12 main squad members at the same time. There was just nothing making them stand out except like, you know, one had black hair and one had blonde hair. That was like the only difference. So after going through and looking at the old book as well as looking some stuff up online, I've come up with four tips that I think I'm going to use in the future to definitely help me keep my cast smaller and they might help you as well. We'll see. Number one, get rid of some of them. I'm not talking killing them off, I'm talking about not including them at all. I know that it's super fun to have just a group of badass warriors. That's the way this book started. I sat there one day and thought that's what I want in a book. I want a large army group that goes out and kicks ass. The problem with my large cast, however, was that they didn't all play a role in the story, which means they weren't really characters, they were just kind of a blob moving around destroying shit together. <laughs> and I know for a lot of people it's so hard to get rid of characters. I understand. I remember when I wrote this book knowing that there were too many characters and trying to delete one, but I just couldn't 
get rid of them because I had invented them and I love them so much, especially as a group, that it was just so hard to say goodbye. So I didn't. So I know I could never write that book with less characters. I know that, but I'm also not trying to get the book published. Um, so I'm definitely keeping it the way it was. I'm not finishing it, but I'm keeping it the way it was. I'm keeping it with the number of characters it has and I have no hopes to ever publish that story because I know it wouldn't do well. So I think for a lot of people, unless you're very good at writing large casts, the choice comes down to keeping all of your characters in the book or trying to publish the book. For me, I have both. I had that book a long time ago, um, Mortals, where I had a whole giant cast of characters and it was fun creating them. But, you know, no one else is going to care about that cast of characters, so I have other books that are more plot-driven, less character-based, that I think are going to do better and might have chances of getting published. Number two, make each character unique. This should go without saying, because, you know, all of your characters should have defining qualities, but sometimes you forget about that when creating large casts, but you really need to know all of your characters way deep down and not just give them, you know, a different hair color, eye color, skin color than the others and call them different. They need distinct personalities and they need to be different from every other character in your book if people are going to remember them. Number three, if you have trouble with too many characters and you, and you know it, make sure to create the plot before you create the characters. Otherwise, you have a large cast of characters and you're trying to stretch a very thin plot over them and it's just not going to work. By creating the plot first, you see exactly how many characters you need from the start. You have the plot there, you see a plot hole, you add a character. That easy. Tip number four, and this is one that applies to people who write sequels, and that is to maybe not introduce every character in the first book. For example, in my book, I had 12 characters that all ran around together, but the truth is I didn't need a perspective from every character. I had a, at least one chapter in every character's perspective, which was so unnecessary. And some of those characters, like Duncan, Trevor, Brittany, Connor, they weren't necessary. I didn't need to name them, maybe name them because they were in the squad, but I didn't need for them to form relationships with every other character. I could have introduced them in the second book and, or made them more prominent in the second book and it would have been so much better. So evaluate your characters and if some of them aren't doing much in the first book, then just push their introductions to the second book or introduce them in the first book but really make them shine in the second book. And that is all I have for you today. Uh, if you have any more tips that I missed or that you think could help me, in getting rid of some characters, please put them down below in the comments. And as always, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and submit to Reviewing Your Stories Volume 2. All the links are down below. Please submit. I love reading your guys' stories. And next week we are going to be discussing filler content, which I have a huge problem with. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, may the God's plot be ever on your side. Woo! Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, remember to like and subscribe and blah 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 blah. So after going through and reading a lot of the old book, as well as looking them things, th I dropped Taser Face. No.